Welcome to the Passive Profits Podcast from StraightBlogger.com, where you'll learn from people already doing it how to build profit-producing online assets without having to leave the house. Now, here's your host, the guy whose biggest fear is having a boss, Nate Rivers. All right, welcome to the podcast. This is episode 20 of the Passive Profits Podcast. I'm Nate Rivers, and uh, this is StraightBlogger.com. For those of you who don't know, what we're going to talk about today is a Kindle publishing mistake that I made last week that ended up costing me a lot of money, a big sales ranking inside the Kindle store. And it's really stupid that I did this because I had a warning and I just went with it anyways. I was trying to get this promotion set up and just done. I did some preparation for it. Anyways, I'll get into what I'm talking about here in a second. I'll tell you exactly what happened. First, I want to read one of these five-star reviews from iTunes. Uh, if you've gone to iTunes and found the podcast straight, you can search Stray Blogger or uh, Passive Profits Podcast, or you can search Nate Rivers. You'll find the podcast and leave a review. I would love that. So Ozadale said, love this guy. He shares so much info. Some of it is really out of the box. First found his website, and it's awesome. Just wish he would make a new podcast a little bit more frequently. I, I already listened to all of them, many of them twice. Keep it up, Nate. So thank you, Azadel, for that review. I love seeing those reviews. And uh, I will. I'm going to start podcasting more, making more episodes. And before again, one more thing before we get into this. We're going to go to a reader question. This reader asked... Uh, they asked a bunch of stuff, but this was essentially the question. How can I know that the system I'm following isn't going to be obsolete in six months? That's a great question, and I know that this exact idea in its different forms is what paralyzes a lot of people from actually you know, taking action and working hard in their business every single day. Um, the common thing that, that people do is uh, They'll get excited about a certain program or format or, or some model that they're going to try. And they'll work on it for maybe a week or so and not, you know, not see immediate results and start wondering, okay, am I... The, the reason they start going back and reading more sales pages and buying more courses and things like that is because really it's, it comes down to this question. They're, they're worrying in the back of their mind. Am I spending a bunch of time doing something that's not going to lead to anywhere. <clears throat> so my answer to this question is, um, earlier this year I just kind of had this this realization that there, there are basic things online, and it's really just general business uh, principles, that you need to follow, and it's basically a back to the basics approach. You need to have something that you sell and you need prospects that you turn into customers and as far as online goes the easiest way to do that is starting out with a kindle ebook and building an email list those things will i i can't say never go away but those are those are things that are going to be around for years and years and years and uh building an email list that's I mean, that is, uh, I could talk about 10 or 15 different reasons why you should do that. But it's an asset that you own, that you control. It's push button traffic. And it's just, it's the easiest way that's the path of least resistance to turn a prospect into a paying customer. Because you follow up with them, remarket to them over and over, help them you know, see you as someone they should trust and, and buy things from, take advice from. So it's a back to the basics approach, having your own product and building an email list. And, uh, your website is kind of the, you know, the communication channel, you send emails, let them know about new blog posts, things like that. So the website's kind of your home base. So let's get into this, uh, this little issue I had. So last week I made a huge mistake. It ended up costing me a lot of money. Um, what happened was I was running a Kindle countdown promo for one of my books. I don't really use the free uh, promos anymore. You you have to choose between a countdown promo or a you know a free where you make your book free for a while. 
the Kindle countdown, I admit, to make these, well, you will see a, a little spike in sales, but it's not going to be crazy. But if you have a list, uh, which I do for these certain Kindle books I'm talking about, I have, I think, like five or six books on this certain topic. And kind of my strategy is every week or two, I put a new one on for 99 cents that are normally $2.99. And I, I just email my list about it several times. So what happened was I made some changes to the book before the promo. I re-uploaded it uh, in the Kindle you know, publishing interface thing. And when I did that, <clears throat> it said no spelling errors or anything. And a lot of times I don't even do this because I've just gotten used to having my Word document that I upload and everything's been fine. I've never had a problem with this. So I uploaded this. I went to look at it in the previewer. And for the Kindle Fire preview, it showed like all the text was smushed over onto the left column into like one one letter per line so it looked it looked really weird the text was all messed up that's what i'm trying to say and so i clicked on like an iphone i clicked on an android preview i clicked on the the regular kindle or the paper white thing and they all looked fine so i thought okay that's fine so i published it um you know within 12 hours i got the email it was up for sale the revised version so the next morning the uh it went the price went to 99 cents this countdown started and i had emailed my list a couple times over a few days the promo was doing awesome so it it shot my book up into the top 4000 paid on kindle and it was getting a bunch of of downloads each day and these are pay, you know they're 99 cents but they're still paid downloads and the reason that this is better is because you're fully you're still in the paid kindle rankings um the free rankings those don't correspond to like real sales after your promo's over anymore it does it you have to get a ton of downloads for that to make any difference anymore and so the countdown deal works better because it will just send your book up the the actual just regular paid rankings so i'd gotten this book into the top four thousand with these emails and putting it at 99 cents. Then I got this notice from Amazon that my book was taken down because of an error. Uh, and it said it was gonna be unavailable for sale till I got this error fixed. So right around there it was like, I don't know, four in the top four or 5,000. But it was unavailable for, so I, all night, let's see. I got this notice in the morning, um, so I'm not even sure when it went unavailable, probably the night before. So it was unavailable, so I hurried and, and fixed it. It took me a while to figure out what was wrong. And basically, I had made my, I had the document in pages for Mac, and I exported as a Word doc and immediately uploaded it. I didn't look at it. And it, and it looked fine once I reopened it in Word later, but the margins were 1.25 inches left and right in the pages document and I changed them back to one inch like the uh, Kindle formatting guide said online and that fixed it whatever the issue was that fixed it so I re-uploaded it. it took another 12 hours so it was basically unavailable for a little over 24 hours I think and it, it being unavailable it couldn't be bought at all so it dropped into the 15,000s and then the 20,000s so overall, the promotion still helped the book, but it would have slowly, you know, your books will pretty much always slowly go down in the rankings at this point because there's so much competition, but it would have stayed in the top 10,000 for several weeks because I've done this before. So the takeaway is always check your book in all versions of the previewer. And the last thing, it doesn't matter what you write it in, but check your book in Microsoft Word at the end before you upload the .doc, the document, and check it against Kindle's you know, recommended formatting guidelines. So that's it for this episode. Uh, for more tips and 
stuff like this. If you like this kind of stuff, go back to strayblogger.com. Uh, opt into the email form. I send my best stuff through the email. Um, let you know about new content through that. So get on the newsletter, on my list, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I would love it if you went to iTunes, found my the podcast, type in Stray Blogger or Nate Rivers, and leave a review. Thanks for listening.